Hey, what is up guys? If you are new here, welcome. I hope you are having a great day. In this video, I will be going through the 9 issues commonly faced by new interactive broker users and how you can resolve it. Or at the very least, I will be able to give you a few solutions as I get questions on them almost on a daily basis. If you are already trading with them, then stick around until the end because I am sure you will still find something to take away from this video. I would greatly appreciate it if you can help me destroy the like button down below. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm so without wasting any more time let's jump right into today's content the first issue commonly faced by many is having limited features or not having trading data even after you have received the email stating that interactive brokers has approved your application for account from my experience the most common reason is because you have not funded the account or your deposit have not arrived the account Simple as that. Interactive brokers made it such a way that as long as you did not fund your account, you won't have access to a lot of the features in your account. However, if you are that sure that you have funded but still unable to use the account, then based on their FAQ section, there are only three possible explanations. Either you haven't funded your account, which we have covered, or you did not request for trading permissions for the product that you are trying to trade. If that's the case, just make sure to request for it in your account and the trading permission will be granted in one business day. The second issue that I get almost every other day is the error message stating that your order is not accepted. There is insufficient cash negative 1.44 Great Britain Pound in your account to obtain the desired position. Firstly, you need to understand that every conversion from currency A to B requires a fixed fee of 2 US dollars and that 2 US dollars will be paid in your base currency. So for most people with a new interactive brokers account, your base currency would most probably be set to Great Britain Pound by default. So when you convert say Sing dollar to US dollars, you don't have 1.44 Great Britain Pound cash to pay that 2 US dollar equivalent of conversion fee. To fix this problem, change your base currency to the currency that you trade the most. For example, if you trade mainly in the US market, then set your base currency to US dollars, which is what I do. Then when you convert Sing dollar to US dollars, you will have US dollar cash, which means the system can deduct that 2 US dollars from your USD balance to pay for that conversion fee. Also, just note that any request to change base currency will take at least one business day to take effect. So just give it a little bit of time and you should be good to go. Next, you might face this issue where you are unable to trade even though you have just obtained account approval, funded your account and gotten your trading permission. There are three possible reasons why you are facing this issue. Firstly, you might not have the right currency to trade the product that you want. Whenever you deposit any other currency, say Sing dollar, it will be reflected and shown in your dashboard as US dollar. However, that number is just a representation of the equivalent US dollar market value for your SING dollar cash. You still need to manually convert your SING dollar to US dollars before you can trade any US dollar stocks or ETFs. Second, even after you have converted, there is a cash settlement of T plus 1 days if I'm not mistaken. What it means is you need to wait one day before you can use your freshly converted US dollar cash to start trading in the US market. And the third possible reason why you are unable to trade could also be because you just funded your account or you just sold some of your stocks. Keep in mind that your cash will have a settlement period of T plus 2 days for cash account. So you need to wait for 2 days after selling your stocks before you can start reusing that money to buy something else or to withdraw. The fourth common issue is having your cost basis differing from your limit buy price. For example, you set a limit buy order for one Apple stock at 140 US dollars, but when your trade went through, you might see that the cost basis reflected in your portfolio could be higher than 140 US dollars say 141 US dollars. From what I understand, there are three possible explanations for this. Firstly, the cost basis should include the commission fee. So you need to factor in that amount based on your pricing structure be it fixed or tiered plan. If you have no idea what's the difference, then feel free to check out this video where I've covered them in detail. Second, it could also be due to the trading spread. This is usually more apparent when you trade less liquid products, for example, island domicile ETFs. When there is very little trading volume, this would usually translate to a higher spread between the bid and ask price. So you could be buying at a slight premium or selling at a slight loss. This is by no means the fault of the broker 
is just how the stock market works. Thirdly, a less popular explanation, but it could also be due to a fractional shares trading. Since you are buying at an odd lot, your shares could be matched with different sellers from different prices. So inevitably, it will result in the difference in the cost basis for the stocks that you buy. Next, if you find yourself unable to log in into interactive brokers, especially on weekends, then you just need to know that they usually perform server maintenance during weekends to make sure that the system is running smoothly during weekdays. You can find their system outage status reported live on their website. So don't freak out when you can't log into your account on weekends. Moving on, just a small issue but I have some asking me if there's any problem with their account funding because interactive brokers tend to invert your name for some reason. For example, if your bank account name is Tan Wei Kiet and you fill in Wei Kiet for first name and Tan for last name, Interactive Brokers would show your name as Wei Kiet Tan. This issue has been raised to Interactive Brokers and their customer support replied that it's just how their system display the last name and the transfer of funds are still possible. So there should be nothing to be worried of. Next, for those of you that want to day trade, which means buy and sell on the same day or some call it active trade Reading, you might be flagged with an error message stating potential pattern day trader or in short we call it PDT. This usually happens if you made at least 3 day trades within the last 5 days and your account's net liquidation value is less than the regulatory required minimum of 25,000 US dollars set by the SEC. If your account is flagged for PDT for the first time, then you will be required to wait at least 5 days before you can buy anything new. And if you choose to violate that rule again, your account could be restricted from trading for up to 90 days and in worst case permanently restricted. So for those of you who want to day trade, there is a section on their website detailing about this so I will leave it down below for you to read. The next thing is not so much an issue but is something that most new users are not aware of and that is the share price and trading data shown on the platform is delayed by at least 10 to 15 minutes. By default, you will receive free delayed market data but in most cases, you will still need to pay to subscribe to live market data which costs approximately 10 to 15 US dollars a month. If you don't want to pay for it, no worries, I don't subscribe to live market data either. You can rely on external sources which are also near live. I will put this video down below for you. Another pro tip here, you can also use the snapshot market data feature to acquire the share price at the particular moment for a super low fee of 1 US cents for the US market. And to make it better, you will receive 1 US dollars of snapshot quotes free of charge every month. So theoretically, you can snapshot 100 times for free every single month. The last issue on today's list is a pretty common occurrence where you might receive this message stating you are currently logged in without trading slash market data permissions. This usually happens when you go idle for a few minutes and interactive brokers will disconnect you from the platform as a security measure. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty annoying especially when I am ready to trade on the platform and I just hop onto another website to search for some information for a few minutes just to come back and see that my account has been disconnected. From what I know, I don't think you are able to change that settings. Do let me know down below if this can be configured because from last I checked, I can't find the settings for this. But anyways, not a big deal by all means. So wrapping up, I hope you found some valuable information in this video and if you want to support my channel, you can help me by clicking the link down below, I get paid a small amount at no extra cost to you whatsoever. If you ever bump into any issues on interactive brokers, I would highly recommend you to reach out to their customer support via the live chat feature. They are pretty responsive and I've had a good experience with them so far. Otherwise, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I will always reply you within a day or two. Alright, that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay invested and as usual, I will see you in the next one.